love it. There we go. All right. <laughs> so we are sitting here with Michael Scro. Is that the correct? That is correct. Okay. It's gross with an S, but it's not gross. I had somebody on, um, or Kubal had Jeff from Digital Hive on the podcast. Mm -hmm. I asked him, how do you pronounce your last name? He said, Knaus. Knaus. I don't know if you know if that's I did or not. not, and now I know. Well, it may Thanks, not Jeff. be. It may not be. Because <laughs> then Jeff was on the uh, Dan Pock show or whatever his name uh -huh. is. It was like this massive podcast. And when Dan introduced him, he was like, it's Jeff Noss. Oh. And I was thinking to myself, uh-oh, I wonder which one is correct. Yikes. You know? Uh, well, good thing when I see him, I just say, hey, Jeff. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> hey, man. That's hey, right. Hey, buddy. Hey, you. Well, we know how to pronounce your last name. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, so, uh, you know, for people, I mean, you are kind of everywhere on, uh, well, everywhere right now in Syracuse. Um, I don't know if I have met somebody who hasn't heard of you or. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, but for those Thanks. listeners who haven't, yeah. can you tell us just a little bit about. Sure. Um, uh, I'm a certified professional coach. I help people mostly, um, on how to people. And so uh, I'm a biz I focus on business and leadership uh, performance and run group uh, coaching programs, one-on-one -on -one coaching programs, a whole ton of training for companies, organizations, higher ed, nonprofits, and, um, and also uh, just a number of community development programs because uh, my overall mission is to create a more competent community. Um, you know, rising tides raise all ships, right? Yeah. And so that's my ethos. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I just tend to show up in spaces and conversations, <laughs> unbeknownst to others, <laughs> and then just start doing my thing. Yeah. And uh, and it's it's been I it's been so neat to see where um, uh, opportunities are showing up in um, conversations around empathy and leadership and really focusing on community development and kindness. Yeah. Um, so it's just neat to see, you know, pockets of this sort of spread and yeah. connecting with others who feel the same way. Yeah. So that's great. Um, it really is, you know, empathy. I think, uh, overall, you know, mindsets are changing, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, as we progress through human history, uh, we come become more advanced. Right. Mm -hmm. And definitely empathy is something you know, I hear you just keep hearing more and more people talk about it. I feel like we're kind of in that stage when it comes to leadership, at least in the area where it's like you talk about it for a set period of time mm -hmm. and then you start to see things change from it. Mm -hmm. You know, you we you know, I haven't seen mass change, but you see little things, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, empathy is huge when it comes to leadership. I liked what you just said about um, evolution. Mm hmm. Uh, I actually think we're on an evolutionary cusp right now. Yeah. And that probably, gosh, in a mm. few hundred or maybe a thousand years, um, we will all have that sixth sense. Yeah. Right. People talk about right. it. Yeah. And um, and not to be sort of uh, voodoo-ish about this. What I'd say is that more people are paying attention mm. and strengthening their intuition skills. Yeah. Because that's a key component for how to do empathy. Yeah, for sure. And so I think eventually once we start exercising that muscle, it's it'll become a need yeah. for human species and we'll have it as much more of a skill. Yeah. Uh, innately. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So I wanted to have you on, you know, this episode or the, the, uh, the podcast, and I've already said this to you, but because um, there's a central theme in the restaurant industry, I feel like in Syracuse, and, you know, I've been kind of running around the restaurant world for the last three and a half, four years in the area. And just from talking to different people, and it could be somebody that's in uh, Oswego or in Sar wherever, mm -hmm. everybody seems to kind of have a central theme of what they're dealing with. Um, obviously, I haven't spoken with everybody, so who mm -hmm. knows. But uh, the ones I have that last year and this year, uh, it is employment issues with employees issue with retention, um, attracting great talent, whatever the case is, restaurant owners, business owners are having issues with their staffing mm -hmm. and there's a whole number of reasons. And so I really, I felt like there's so many industry specific people that listen to this, you know, our podcast that I thought, well, 
I know I don't have the answers mm. and I don't know of anybody else that's like talking about re the restaurant world on a national level that's talking about this. So kind of how do we take, you know, some of those pie in the sky dreams of like, you know, the Google leaders and things like that mm -hmm. and translate that down to a small business to help with staffing. Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. I, you know, I'd like to start with a story if I could, please uh, just set the context of some of the thoughts I have. When I was 11, I was a paper boy okay. and so newspaper carrier. Yeah. And I uh, had two blocks of uh, North Side uh, Street and we got paid very little money. Yeah. And this is back in, gosh, wherever, maybe the 80s. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think I got like 11 bucks a week, maybe okay. 12 bucks, yeah. uh, depending on, you know. Um, but one of the interesting things was I got probably anywhere from 30 to $75 in tips. Wow. A week. Wow. And so I was able to fund my Star Trek uh, <laughs> fandom comic book collection, yeah. you know, all the different craft things I did uh, through this. And all the kids in the community didn't understand how I was doing this. Hmm. And I didn't know. I wasn't thinking about this. I just saw it from the money standpoint and just thought, yay, I mm -hmm. get to go buy some more stuff yeah. um, or help my family or whatever, what I was doing with the money. And so I started to pay attention as I got a little bit older, um, working for um, a grocery store. Hmm. And uh, again, similar uh, situation in that I was, I worked on the front end cash register yeah. for about 10 months. Okay had super accuracy in terms of my scan rate. I probably was the highest, one of the highest in the company. Nice. And which grocery was it Wegmans? It was <laughs> shout out to Pond street Wegmans that no longer exists. Yeah. Um, and at that same time, Wegmans was converting to pulling all of their produce departments to the front of the store. Okay. Myself and one of my friends, Maria, because uh, we were so sort of customer service focused mm. um, and friendly and kind and all that stuff on the front end, were asked to be part of the new produce department. Nice. And so Pond Street was actually the first produce department in Syracuse area to move the produce really? to the front of the store. Wow. And we got trained at another store to mm. come back. And this is where, you know, at times I saw Bob Wegman, oh, who wow. has since passed away. Yeah. And would say to me, you know, this looks great. Yeah. Right. Hmm. And so I had a real and Maria a sense of pride hmm. about what we were doing. We felt valued and we saw the difference that we were making. Yeah. Um, hmm. But we had to get there. You right. know, we we were tenacious. You know, we were 16, 17 years old. Yeah. And uh, I found myself hmm. in short order becoming the person in charge of the department on Sundays. Yeah. And so. Again, I kept finding myself in these situations where yeah. opportunity sort of struck. Yeah. And so what I could share, I think I've learned and what I try to pass on to people is that preparation um, and opportunity is what people would call luck. Right. Right. And so folks are like, wow, that's so amazing. Yeah. Well, I was prepared to meet that opportunity and it sort of happened. And then I moved to the DeWitt store because mm -hmm. I didn't want to be in charge anymore. I just was a kid <laughs> and I was going to college. I'm like, I don't want to be in charge. Like, <laughs> stop making me a leader. I don't know if the Pond Street Wegmans was as uh, rough as the Pond Street Tops is today. <laughs> that's right. So I could, you know, build some street cred today if I yeah. was working there. Um, but I went to DeWitt store. I thought, I'm going to get lost in this crowd. Right. And I'm going to just be like everybody else. Yeah. Well, sure enough, <laughs> I w ended up being the head part-timer. Hmm. I was the person that came in when a full-time person was out. Okay. I was the person that did all the signs for the department and on the chalkboards. Yeah. Um, and I find myself in this role again where um, hmm. I was sort of appointed or anointed into leadership in some capacity or management. And so, again, I kept threading these ideas of, like, what's happening? Why is this uniquely different? I'm not seeing other people who are like me uh, find themselves in these situations. Yeah. And how, and old, how old were you? Uh, this was 17, 18. Okay. And um, um, what I then sort of saw in college, mm. same thing. I took on roles. I was the member of this club or that club. <laughs> and then certainly I was someone. You have to be the president of it <laughs> so I guess what I'm saying is in, in terms of like customer service and in terms of like 
um, uh, leadership, uh, you have to show up. Yeah. You have to participate. Right. And I think the one thing I've learned is that when we engage other people, whether that's our boss or our constituents, our customers, mm-hmm. clients, um, that engagement feels a certain way and folks, it resonates with people. Yeah. It, um, it leaves a heart print. Um, there's yeah. something about engagement. Yeah. So I think a lot of folks run through the motions of mm-hmm. talking to customers and, and that sort of thing, or talking to their boss, but it doesn't feel any, you don't feel yeah, anything. Sure. So yeah. an active engagement or engagement in general is a way to kind of punch through and sort of show up and be someone who's um, noticed, yeah. who is applauded, promoted, yeah. <laughs> given more money, right. whatever the yeah. thing might be. And so engagement, I think, is one of the critical factors for success. On both sides of the fence. On both sides of the fence. Yeah. And that stems to the business owner, the chef, the manager, yeah. who also has to engage right. with their employees. When you know there's uh, surveys that are done in companies and mm-hmm. organizations, they're called employee engagement surveys, yeah. right? Because we're measuring how well that's going. Right. And so engagement has to be a factor mm-hmm. in all of that. You know, I saw the same thing when I worked in roles in alumni relations okay. for large universities, right? Yeah. I was in charge of alumni engagement. Mm-hmm. Um, no surprise there that I'd find a career in that <laughs> because that was something I did well, I cultivated, I knew how to create strategies yeah. for it. It wasn't just... Um, being nice, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. There are strategic efforts that could be used to develop engagement or yeah. engagement practices. Um, so engagement is a factor um, yeah. in employee to uh, manager to employee to customer. Yeah. Um, and I see it all the time. Great examples of it, mm-hmm. and I see all the time not so good examples <laughs> yeah. of it. <laughs> How does it work? I mean, do both parties have to be engaged for that to work? I mean, what happens if you have a manager that's super engaged in a you know, staff member who's not or a staff member who's super engaged in a manager who's not? What I usually will talk to managers or leaders about is that we're not going to convert everybody. Mm-hmm. But no one should be left behind. Yeah. Because people will notice if you only pay attention to those folks who pay attention to us. Right. When you're a leader or manager, you have to pay attention to everybody. Yeah. And so not everyone wants to drink the Kool-Aid, but you still have to offer it. Yeah. Right. (laughs) And so, um, because I ultimately, if people will want to be motivated to find success, more money, Mm. the better shift, right. They're going to drink the Kool-Aid, be engaged and sort of give in that capacity. It's the difference between, um, letter of the law and the spirit of the law Mm -hmm. a lot of employees anywhere right i did what i was told yeah for sure right but there was no feeling in it it was not it was just you know 422 please you know i said please (laughs) right like so there's just this missing spirit uh, to it and that's what i would call engagement yeah but you have to be motivated yeah right so managers and leaders should not um be demotivated by someone's lack of motivation Uh uh-huh we should just then dial up the inspiration skills yeah. to influence these kind of outcomes that we want for employees. Is there an industry where these practices or like this, uh, you know, working of engagement and things like that is, uh, it doesn't work? Hmm. Well, I wouldn't say it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. It's maybe not called for or okay. called or curated as much. Yeah. Um, there are working environments where you have um, a number of specialists, yeah. and whatever that might be. The specialists prefer head down, you right. know, working on their spreadsheet. Yeah. And they're okay with, you know, not having a lot of chatter or right. engagement, you know, they feel good about the role that they're playing because mm. they're a specialist and they see themselves as an expert. And so they don't necessarily need, you know, the Google atmosphere where you're bouncing on a ball right. down the hallway. Yeah. Right. And so in some f- job functions in industries, it doesn't necessarily call for it, uh-huh. uh, but it should always be available. It yeah. should always be a strategy, yeah. right? We should still, engage a team of accountants um we we shouldn't just shortchange them because we think they're serious and they're specialists you know we should still have cake in the conference room for sally's birthday right right (laughs) as you're saying this i'm thinking of milton from office space Mm -hmm. you know with the stapler and you know 
That's right. You, you know, and that represents that. something interesting, <laughs> right? Like everyone wants to be part of an organization. Right. And so that stapler represented that. Yeah. That was his part, right? Mm. And wanted to be validated, yeah, right? Yeah, for sure. And you think about that sort of in the uh, hospitality industry, catering, restaurants. Right. Um, you know, if you're frontline staff, you sometimes feel you're just the frontline staff. Yeah. And you don't see colleagues that stay forever. Right. Right. And so you're not necessarily as invested. And so your question is, why should I be engaged? Yeah. Right. And so those are the challenges that we face. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean we can't address it. Right. You know, and there should be uh, plenty of opportunity to re-strategize and implement something new. I mean, if you yeah. don't have an employee of the week program, think about doing something fun, yeah. right? Where, and it, uh, you know, the thing is we don't have to throw money at it all the time. Okay. It doesn't have to be, you have to get this gift card or you get the shirt. Yeah. Bragging rights. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> when I, mean, I, <laughs> I come from sales. So in my head, I'm like, let's incentivize everybody mm -hmm, to do better. Mm -hmm. We actually tried that here um in december with the managers mm -hmm. and by here i'm referencing cafe cabal and with the each location manager we said you know here's what you sold what your store sold in coffee last year right. uh throughout the month of december if you can beat that number uh by this amount then you'll get this you get this dollar amount in your paycheck and if you are the top that beats the number then you'll get this and it was I mean, listen, for a manager, it was a you know, decent little amount of money, mm -hmm. and it didn't work. <laughs> yeah, you know, and so when we think about money, you know, transactional actions mean transactional outcomes. Yeah. Right? And so when you feel a little bit more attached and engaged, mm -hmm. right, your photos on the Hall of Fame wall at work, yeah. that's a little bit more permanent. Yeah. And there's something more meaningful about that. Yeah. And so there are ways to kind of develop these kind of incentives and programs. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's all engagement practices. Yeah. Right. I see you. I'm right. paying attention to you. You know, we want you to win. Yeah. Um, but everyone doesn't perform based on the same set of motivational factors. Right. right? So yeah. you have to have a series of things that you can do. And again, hmm. it will cost you time. It doesn't necessarily yeah. call you, cost you money. So what's the minimum and maximum of that? I mean, I don't I don't. We we're talking about people, so it's hard to say there's a, you know, here's your measuring stick. But I wonder um, how much of that, you know, like what's the minimum that you have to put into it? Mm -hmm. And then what's considered to be too much? Mm -hmm. you, know? you know, one of the things I'm surprised by when I talk to business owners mm -hmm. um, of all shapes and sizes and ask them, hey, do you put out an internal newsletter? an email from you to the whole team once yeah. a month and people look at me like, you're crazy. What are you talking about? <laughs> right? Cause we're more likely to send an email to all of our customers and Hey, there's this promotion, but we spend very little time on internal public relations. Right. And, uh, that's, mm. I think the most minimal effort we could make is mm. to focus on what are our strategies for internal public relations. Yeah. Um, so even our marketing people should be helpful in our internal. Right. Uh, when I worked at NYU, uh, I worked with this woman and uh, she was in our communications public relations department. And um, every time I met with her, she was just so kind. I was like, what is going on here? Like, I have a reputation. She should at least, you know, give me side eye once in a right, while. Yeah. And uh, I finally asked her, like, why are you so kind to me? And she said, you know, there's this concept of internal public relations. She's like, I mm. see you just like anyone else on the outside. Mm. And that just sort of struck me. And so mm. I've always sort of performed both the external, but also the internal yeah. and pay attention. And so the same strategies that might work on the outside could work for us on the inside. Yeah. So I would say the most minimal um, is a message from the boss, yeah. you know, once a month and spotlight an employee. Bobby goes to Lemoyne College and is graduating mm -hmm. a, a, in his uh, major of finance and plays soccer. Mm -hmm. Let's all congratulate Bobby on his next adventure, right? Yeah. Even if it's somebody who's leaving our company, right? Right. Mm -hmm. I see you. I'm I'm supportive of you, and that kind mm -hmm. of attention, while it may not be me that was profiled, yeah, I see that the boss is a caring person, yeah, and is engaged with their employee. Right. So I'd say most minimally an internal 
public relations plan. Yeah. Starts with at least a, a message from the boss once a month. Right. Right. That's not just about, you know, here are the bottom lines and the yeah. things, but it might be, here's the new recipe right. uh, that we're going to please shh, don't tell anybody. Yeah. Right. Like right. make it fun, you yeah. know? And so those sort of things are a basis and then go all the way up to, you know, retreat, yeah. you know, and a retreat doesn't have to be, um, we're going to go to a lodge and hire Mike Scro to do yeah. a thing. It but could be, we're going to, but they can, <laughs> uh, they can go to Onondaga Lake right. and B Y O yeah. barbecue. Right? right. And just have a good time. Yeah. Right. Sure. And do some trust falls. Yeah. Right. It doesn't take a rocket science to engage people. Right? right. And everyone brings their families or what have you. Yeah, right. For sure. So it's, it's right. anything in between those two things. Yeah. It's, um, Honestly, I thought you were going to say more like it's a, it's interesting the difference in uh, thought of where that just went. Mm. In my head, mm-hmm. and I'm always going to side, in, especially in this area, on your right. Uh, but in my head. No, you know what? It, it's not right or wrong. It's productive, unproductive. Okay. Right? Because yeah. there is no right way because otherwise we'd all just do it. Right. Okay. Right. I think of everything individualist individually. Mm. So I think of like zoning in on that one person mm. and what's the minimum maximum there. And mm. it's just really interesting that you go to the group mm-hmm. because maybe it's just cause my strength and mm-hmm. you know, my weakness, mm-hmm. maybe I, I don't do very well with a group as well as I do on an individual mm-hmm. basis. Um, you know, I remember when I, so I was, uh, worked in sales for years and uh for one company for 10 years and then was promoted to kind of their district Mm -hmm. manager at one point and i did a very poor job of being that district manager Mm. and so i always do if i was going and meeting with the staff member one-on-one i would do really well with them um but um meeting with the whole group or communicating to the group as a whole i didn't do very well with Mm. it Mm-hmm. Um, so I, you know, it, it brings me, as you were saying, th- as you were talking, I'm thinking to myself, is there ever an excuse? Let's just go from like the staff's, uh, point mm-hmm. of view. Mm-hmm. Is there ever an excuse if you have a poor leader? Like, well, I guess, what do you do if you have a poor leader? Mm-hmm. Um, so you have somebody that, as I, as you're talking about, like sending the emails, I'm thinking of bosses I've mm-hmm. had in the past, even mm-hmm. that kind of do those things that you're saying, but you know that there's nothing behind it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just kind of like doing the motions because they read it in a book type of a thing. Yeah, yeah. So I'd say first, it's there's got to be a self-audit. Okay. You have to know that you have a poor leader. Yeah. And that starts with looking at yourself. What is it that you can be doing to mm-hmm. activate or engage more with your organization, your company, your mm-hmm. role? Yeah. Um, and if you answered all those questions, then you're ready for yeah. a conversation. And it's a conversation. Okay. Too often, people frame uh, it as a confrontation. Yeah. It's not a confrontation. If it's a confrontation, that's the results you're going to get. Right. Yeah. Right. If it's a conversation, it's a whole different ball of wax. Yeah. Right. And so yeah. I don't know of anybody ever yeah. in my 20 some years <laughs> that anyone has said to their boss, hey, I love to buy you a cup of coffee to talk. Hmm. And they said, no, okay. I don't know of anybody. Yeah. Right. So if we use, again, empathy to lean in on this, Mm -hmm. but if it's, hey, I want to confront you. Yeah. Right. (laughs) Yeah. They're probably going to say no. Yeah. You did. And it's not going to work out about it. Right. Right. So if we can clean up whatever we got going on ourselves and then frame it as a conversation, Mm -hmm. you know, whether it's employee to the employer or employer to the employee, Mm -hmm. uh, a complete reset conversation includes three things. Okay. Uh, Goals. Like, what, what is my job? <laughs> what are the things that we need to be doing, yeah. right? Oftentimes, we do talk about that stuff. However, I will say it's not universal. Okay. I know of people who get jobs, and no one tells them what they need to do. Yeah. <laughs> so make sure there's at least a conversation about what the goals are, you know? And for the employer having the conversation with the employee, make it aspirational. Okay. So if they're talking about, hey, we want to reach this level of sales by this quarter, mm-hmm. Um, what do you think we can do? Do you think we can go even higher? Yeah. What, what kind of benchmark do we want to set? Yeah. Right. Or maybe there's different ways to measure success for that particular employee. Maybe they're in charge of social media for the restaurant or yeah. other things. Um, so give them some, um, benchmarks aspirationally. All right. The other piece, which 
people don't talk about as part of this reset conversation is uh, expectations. Okay. Expectations are people things, mm. right? Hey, if you're running late, text me. Yeah. <laughs> um, hey, if we're going to have a team meeting, could we do it in the morning? Because I'm better uh, in the morning, right? Yeah. Anything to do with how we people okay. is an expectation. And we should agree upon what the expectations are. Hmm. These are not goals. Yeah. This is how we people here in our organization okay. or how the employee best peoples, yeah. right? And so walk away with an agreement that that's, this is the way we do it. Okay. But we don't talk about those things. And that's where usually things jump the shark. Yeah, right. The third part, and you have to be vulnerable and be able to get to the space. So talk about goals first, mm -hmm. then expectations, and then talk about feedback loops. Okay. Right. So Anthony, hey, you know, best that I receive feedback immediately. So if you've ever got something you got to tell me, don't miss a beat. Just let me know and say it with the words that you have. If you're mm -hmm. angry, be angry, yada, 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 yada. Yeah. You know, set up the conditions for how you receive feedback. Okay. And then ask them. How do they receive feedback? Hmm. Write it down. And when you have to give them feedback, use it. Okay. Right? Yeah, that's good. Almost exclusively, the thing I hear at any HR unit of any company is we have communication problems. Yeah. And when we get beneath that, it's usually no one knows how to give or receive feedback. Yeah. And so if that's like the number one thing, let's get it right, you know? And so... We don't usually do that because we don't think anything bad's going to happen. Oh, we're just going to figure it out. Right. Right. But then the bad thing happens and now we don't know how to talk to each other. Yeah. Or someone's going to use a strategy that's not helpful <laughs> or the other person can't receive it. You know what I mean? And so when I've had those conversations and I've taken written notes and even shared it with employees and then come back to it and say, hey, so and so. I'm going to use our feedback loop process and I'm going to go through exactly how you want to hear this information, but it's not going to stop me from giving you the information. Hmm. Right. And so right. we have to set the expectation yeah. that feedback is an ongoing process, Yeah. but we don't do it. And, and a lot of times we don't do it in the restaurant business yeah. or uh, hospitality because we're moving at such a pace. We're like, Oh, that person wasn't as kind to that customer. Well, right. you know what? Yeah. I, I, so let it slide. We're really busy. And so I got to take it. Right. Yeah. Right. So we're just moving at this pace that we don't make time for that minimal feedback. Right. right? Or having set up the expectation of feedback. Yeah. If we can have those kind of reset conversations around goals, expectations and feedback, it'll improve the quality of communication. And at the very least, while someone may not last or stay mm -hmm. of their own choice or because they get let go, at least they were clear about what was what. Yeah. Right. right. Sure. We're all owed that. Right. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to pause and just reset this real quick. Sure. So that's a 28. Does this have a 30 minute before? Oh, sure. As you're talking, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, my intention is to talk to you about things with uh, involving the restaurant industry. But honestly, with each example, I'm thinking of these instances or encounters I've had from more of my, I don't want to say corporate, but more of my corporate job. And, you know, things pop up where I'm like, oh, yeah, that's what was happening. Mm -hmm. I guess is there, you know, it, I mean, in a restaurant, uh, do you have to, do you have to have more of an individualistic uh, approach to each person? I mean, obviously we're talking about human beings here, right? Sure. So, and not a lot of times is a restaurant owner in a business going to think that way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like, I give you money, you do job, that's it. But uh, how much of a how much of a detailed approach do you have to have with each individual in your team? Like how, like what, what is going too far with them to help them grow or change or learn yeah. about them? I would say the first piece is to identify the role that they have okay. and identify which skills we need to focus on and maybe focus on two or three. Okay. Right. So if you're more of a front of a house role, yeah. Right. So customer service would be important. Mm -hmm. Kindness, yeah. you know, maybe even, um, uh, influencing inspirational skills, mm -hmm. right? You know, positive, yeah. <laughs> those sort of things, because you're the face of the business, well, right? Making a good, making a person a good person is going to make them a good person everywhere. A hundred percent. And I'll take what you said, because I think that's how most people think about it. I think about all of these attributes uh, and skills as competencies. Okay. And I take personality out of it. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. someone who might be introverted or extroverted, that's really just about how they get their energy. Yeah. 
And so mm -hmm. we could all mm -hmm. be public relations people. We all could be Excel wizards, right? <laughs> right? If we're trained yeah. and if we build those skills. So nothing is divorced mm -hmm. from us because of our personality. Okay. And so as a leader, owner, manager, is to focus on the role that your employees playing mm -hmm. and distinguish between front of the house, back of the house. It doesn't mean back of the house is allowed to do whatever they want. Yeah, for sure. The, I mean, quality control is supreme when it comes to back of the house yeah. work, right? And so think about the characteristics, attributes, competencies that these folks should have mm -hmm. and um, help even develop a performance plan, right? Yeah. Sounds crazy in the restaurant business. Right. Why would I have a performance plan? But if you can't vision out what a successful employee looks like there yeah. for the role that they have, then shame on you. Yeah. Right. So give them the best chance for success. Mm -hmm. You know, we make too many assumptions. Oh, of course, everyone knows to smile. No, nope, they don't. <laughs> yeah. You know, and uh, and there's a ton of great free information out there for yeah. Uh, restaurant owners, uh, anyone who's interested in customer service, you know, just YouTube it. You yeah. Know? And I don't get paid by YouTube to say that, <laughs> but there's just so many resources out there. One that strikes me as so cool mm -hmm. that started um, in a business out in Seattle was uh, there's a place, I forgot the name of the place, but they're, uh, they sell fish. Okay. And their, their spirit is just amazing. Hmm. They, you go there to buy fish and they're like, what do you need? And they're like a, sal uh, uh, a salmon and they'll throw the fish over your head and package it up for you. Yeah. And there's this element of fun. Yeah. And so a business developed a whole philosophy around this um, right. particular fish um, place. And it's called the fish philosophy. Yeah. And they've got right. four elements for... Uh, how any business can transform themselves rather immediately because it's simple, right. you know, having fun, being playful yeah. is one of the elements, um, making their day, hmm. um, choosing your attitude, okay. right? So if I start the day saying I'm going to be positive, I have a greater chance of being positive right. uh, as a result. And so hmm. it, it's it's neat that there's so many folks focusing on this. Mm -hmm. And so if we're just looking inwards to find the answer, we're probably not going to find it. Yeah. And so I would say be open to learning okay. and developing our own skills and how to create engagement practices that work for our own company. Yeah. Um, but let's set up our folks for success. Yeah. Now on the flip side, there are a lot of challenges right. <laughs> where folks are not motivated. Yeah. You know, I, I jotted down uh, a few ideas about what makes someone really awesome at customer service. Okay. Um, and I think it's three things. One is motivation. Mm -hmm. If you're motivated to kill it, you're going to yeah. do that. Uh, social awareness, which is an emotional intelligence competency, yeah. right? And so if we're picking mm. up the emotions, the tonality, the body language of other people, yeah. we probably could do something really positive with that. Right. You know, like it's no surprise. I get a lot of free things from a lot of downtown restaurants <laughs> and probably not after today now, uh, <laughs> because I'm just kind to them, yeah. uh, everybody. And right. uh, we get to the checkout and they're like, oh, we're going to give you the family and friends discount. Yeah. Why is that unusual yeah. to be kind, right? So I'm doing it in reverse. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I'm looking for folks on the other end to do it with me, right. right? And so social awareness helps us do that. Yeah. And last yeah. piece is it doesn't matter what our jobs are. If you have a personal brand or the uh, an ethos that you're trying to cultivate in sort of the work world, yeah. then you're paying attention of how you're doing that. Okay. And so I find that those three qualities mm -hmm. make an exceptional sort of um, customer service uh, person. Yeah. Um, and if that's the case, then how are we helping people develop those things? Yeah. Right. You know, uh, do owners or restaurant managers um, talk to their employees about social media use? Right. You know, you're representing us. And, yeah. And uh, we, we care about that. Mm. And we want you to represent yourself. Yeah. In a way that speaks highly of you, not just of us. Right. right? And as a result, we're going to give you all free T-shirts to wear. Yeah. With our logo on it. Yeah. Because we want you to wear it proudly that you're part of our team. Mm -hmm. Right. But even just having conversations like that. Yeah. Right. That are not necessarily just focused on this is how we make the ham sandwich. Right. 
right? We have to look at all the ways in which our people are associated with our, our company, our organization, our restaurant, yeah. and have conversation. Again, conversation about right. it. Because then when the bad thing happens, we're all over that. Yeah, for sure. But we could prevent the bad thing from happening yeah. by talking about it. I have to be honest. I, comp- I thought your approach and the this conversation would be go in a completely different direction. I thought that you would be more along the lines of take them out to lunch and buy it. You know what I mean? And like do mm-hmm. things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, not that there's yeah. anything you know yeah. wrong with not with, you know, obviously again, you're the expert in this. Um, and maybe it's just what I think is like, this would work, you know, that would work. Like take them out to lunch, figure out what, you mm-hmm. know, what motivates mm-hmm. them and then help them, mm-hmm. you know, do that. Um, and it's so interesting to hear it be to hear your um, tips be and advice be uh, more structured. Maybe that's a bad mm-hmm. word, but you know, more around it, learning, yeah, right, and right. conversation, and, and more about the group mm-hmm. instead of just kind of yeah. focusing on that that's right. one. That's right. Um, well, you know, interesting thing about groupthink. Yeah. Right. It it works on many levels. Right. Yeah. So if the team feels like. We're killing it, mm-hmm. and it's great. When one of our teammates is not, the whole group is involved to help, right? Because right? we feel obligated to do so. Yeah. And so teamwork really helps drive individual performance because if you're the lackluster person, mm-hmm. <laughs> you're going to be motivated to get out of that rut because right. your teammates care and or are setting the benchmark higher, and you're like, you know what? I'm going to kill it. I'm going to do this. Yeah. You know. So what's a timeline? I mean, what what do you think is reasonable for a business that does none of this today mm-hmm. to then have a business where the staff are fully engaged and committed and mm-hmm. everybody's working as a team. I mean, how long did you tip it? Would you say you would see something like that taken? I'd say start with this reset conversation. Mm-hmm. And so if you're not already having this sort of, you can call it an onboarding conversation, but if Sally's been there for three years, yeah. you can have a reset conversation, but have this conversation with these three parts Hmm. and it depends on how many people you have and the time you could take to have it but i would announce in your new monthly newsletter (laughs) that these conversations are going to happen yeah and um again we there's a lot of us who are so good at what we do the peopling piece is difficult yeah because we're great skilled specialists in something it doesn't mean we then become the most excellent manager of people right. because we're really good at Excel. Yeah. Right. Uh, I hear this all the time with salespeople. Mm-hmm. They get promoted because they're successful salespeople and then they're managing a sales team. Those skills don't translate because they're different skills needed to manage a team. For sure. Right. So it would start with these conversations and, and they could go as quick or as fast as you or quick as or slow as you want, depending on how many people that you have and the time mm-hmm. you can invest in it. But mm-hmm. I think two things can happen quickly. One is be willing to make the decision that you're going to do something different. Yeah. And then second, have these conversations, let people talk. Yeah. Right. We have the structure of, you Mm. know, at the end of the day in any organization, what we call ourselves only has to do with how we get paid. Yeah. Right. So as a team, (laughs) there, it doesn't matter your owner, you're this one, you're the marketing specialist. uh, Yeah. Right. It's just how we get paid. Right. And so if we're a family, if we're a team, then let's treat each other in that way. If we treat each other mm. based on a role, yeah. well, you're gonna you're not gonna win oh, faster, yeah. right? You're gonna win slower because yeah. people are put in their place and these sort of ideas and it happens a lot with mm. restaurants because front of the house, back of the house are such different dynamics in what happens yeah. and how things are happening, right? Because people are not necessarily mm. seen who are back at the house. And so, you know, there's, there's just different uh, sets of expectations and we have to live with the same expectations, not Mm. different ones. Yeah. There is a, um, a position I was in where I just gotten promoted. And so, and I had gotten promoted at the same time as like three other people. We all got promoted to the same position, just in different areas. And the first thing I think all of us did once we got our company laptop and cell phone was immediately put in our signature, you know, regional mm-hmm. district, whatever yeah, yeah. owner head mm-hmm. honcho. And, uh, our the vice president of the company came around and said, uh, why did you do that? And well, this is my new job title. Okay. But have you ever looked at my 
email signatures and mm-hmm. it just said their name, company, phone number. That was it. Mm-hmm. You know, he was like, he said, you don't need to hide behind that. That's right. You don't have to try and flaunt out there. I'm chief operating, whatever. That's right. You know, that's right. Um, and I just always thought that was, you know, really interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of taking yourself maybe not uh, off that pedestal, you know, off that kind of level off that, uh, I'm in charge type thing. Mm-hmm. Like it reminds me of that story of, I forget if it generated from, if it, uh, started with from a movie or what it was, but you know, these, uh, people are held hostage right behind enemy lines mm-hmm. in this jail cell and they're tortured and beaten mm-hmm. and all that stuff. And these Navy SEALs go in to rescue them. And, you know, they break into this compound and find them and open up their cell and they're like, you know, come with us, come with us. And they don't move. Mm. And they're trying to figure out why they won't leave their mm-hmm. cell until one of the seals takes off his weapon, gets down on the ground, huddles in next to them mm-hmm. and sits with them. And then they all have this mm-hmm. exodus, you know, um, mm-hmm. as a leader, it's a lot of times just putting yourself in with your people, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. it's kind of like the tribe mentality, yeah. you know, than it is necessarily some mm-hmm. spider web mm-hmm. of where does the buck stop? Mm-hmm. That's right. You know? And, you know, we have to, if we want for our team any change, we need to ro- role model the way. Yeah. Right. And so I work with a lot of folks who get triggered by things and it's, well, how do we stop focusing on what's triggering you and not get triggered? Right. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Right. And so <laughs> if I haven't worked on my own stuff and I'm triggered by your bad behavior or incompetence mm-hmm. and I want to help you with your incompetence, but I haven't even addressed mine yeah. and being able to, cause you know, when we talk to anybody, if we don't address our own things first, we're going to bring that into the conversation Yeah. and that's going to be heavy and yeah. it's going to be too much for the person who just forgot the forks that day. Yeah. Right. And it turns into this loaded conversation because right. yeah. you haven't addressed your own stuff, yeah. you know? So, you know, we have doctor heal thyself mm-hmm. mentality. Right. right. And so folks who are leaders, managers, owners looking at their own stuff mm. and making sure they're being bringing the best, you know, their best foot forward. Can you be a bad person and a good leader? Oh, that's interesting. I know both are kind of relative, but or at give least me an be, example of what a bad person does. Um, I don't know. I, you know, maybe ang- you know, angry, goes home, you know, yells at your kids, yeah. you know, kind of that sort of a thing. Um, you know, mm-hmm. cheats on your taxes, you know, things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, obviously bad is relative, right? Yeah. Everybody has a different bad, but I'm just wondering, is it possible? Like, you know, mm-hmm. do you almost have to deal with yourself before you can even begin to become a good leader? Or are they, is it kind of like two journeys down the same, you know, two paths? Yeah, parallel? I think you can address both at the same time. Okay. Um, you know, there's a question around a um, uh, quiz I use around in empathic leadership that talks about addressing morale and productivity okay. and whether or not you should address one over the other one. Yeah. And um, what it says is to address both at the same time Okay. Uh, because they're necessary. Right. So when we think mm-hmm. about bad behavior, uh, we, I think about, you know, the level of morale a place has. Yeah. But that includes the person who might be doing the bad behavior. Right. Right. They clearly don't feel good enough. Yeah. That they're doing the bad thing. Yeah. And so I would not say that they're a bad leader. Mm-hmm. I don't know that they're leading in that moment. Right. Right. So hmm. I, I often look at leadership as a behavior than it is a title. Okay. And so if someone is leading the way, um, you don't need a title to do that. Hmm. You walked, walk in right. any medical office and the assistant is the gatekeeper, oh, they're yeah. in charge, yeah. right? They're a leader, yeah. right? And they're probably the least paid that works in that medical office, right. but they're the person in charge, yeah. right? And so the role that we play, any role that we play, we can be a leader. Yeah. Um, and it stems from our behavior, not the title, how much money we get paid. Yeah. You know, there are people I've encountered in my life, you know, I used to work with a woman uh, up at Lemoyne College. She was our... Um, she collected all the bottles and cans okay. and recycling in the dorms. Okay. And, uh, when I was a student, you know, we would give her grief cause she would collect the bottles and cans like seven o'clock in the morning and we're like, we're sleeping, you know? Yeah. 
and then cut to 10 years later after I graduated, I worked at the college and she happened to clean the building I was in hmm. as an employee and we became dear friends. Yeah. And um, she was a campus icon. Yeah. It, she, everyone knew who she was. Hmm. Everyone felt a certain way about her. They cared about her. And when she passed away, I mean, she had an extraordinary number of people that came to that funeral service because mm. she touched the lives of people. Yeah. Well, if you based it on her role, you know, should someone have that kind of attention? Right. No, she tugged at the heartstrings of everybody she encountered because she mm. was such a wonderful leader in her own right. Yeah. Right. And we celebrated her, yeah. you know, but you don't have to have, you don't have to be the president or the owner in order to get that, you know, so yeah. checking your own intentions about things, you know, a lot of folks rely on their title mm -hmm. as a way to do something. Yeah. For right. Sure. I'm the so-and-so don't you know? Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, right. <laughs> that still doesn't solve our issue at hand. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. For sure. The inventory still has to get done. <laughs> You'll find, I'd imagine you'll find a lot of growth in a company based on that leader, mm -hmm. based on that leadership. If you have, I mean, if you have somebody that is a great leader, manager, owner, whatever, that is effectively communicating with the people, then you'll see people stay and get better and grow just because of that one person. That's right. You know, that's right. So, uh, you know, are there any, uh, any advice or any tips you could, you would suggest for somebody who's going to hire, mm -hmm. whether it be in the interview or who they're looking for or anything like that? Yeah. You know, one of the things, uh, I used to do, I, I ran a bed and breakfast special event facility. Okay. Um, you may not know that. Yeah, and know so that. as part of our, when we hired caterers or event staff, uh -huh. we would do, uh, group interviews. Okay. And the group interview always included, here's, here's the setup, yeah. here's the thing, let's do it. Yeah. And what we would observe is uh, mostly not the technical skill, mm -hmm. how they worked with other people. Okay. Right? So if they bumped into someone, did they say they were sorry? Yeah. You know, if they needed help, did they ask for it? Hmm. Right? So if we're hiring new people, I'd say, let's be outside the box. Okay. That's, you can't do the way you would hire an accountant, the same way you would hire someone for a restaurant. Right. Right. And so let's look at how group dynamics play out. Let's look at, um, how they, um, would do customer service. Okay. Um, how are they leading in that conversation? If they're energetic, excited, you know, um, willing to learn. Yeah then you've got a good egg, right? <laughs> right. You know, the person that's, I've got 13 years of experience and boo, 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 boo. And the way that they're telling you that yeah. doesn't feel good. Right. They're probably not a fit. Yeah. Right. Sure. And so when we're looking for fit, we're looking for who's going to emote successfully do customer service, be able to have conversations, not confrontations. Yeah. Right. And really look at some of those, hmm. you know, a lot of people for a long time have been calling these things soft skills. Yeah they're essential skills. Okay. We can't look at them as soft skills because then they look like we're hiring luxury item things, yeah. right? Oh, that would be nice if they're nice to people. Right. Well, no, that's the whole job. Yeah, right, for sure. <laughs> right? And your business is going to be make or break in the restaurant world um, or catering or hospitality. Yeah. One bad experience, you know, whether front of the house or back of the house, you know, someone gets food poisoning yeah. um, because we were too careless and not washing our hands or someone, you know, has a very poor experience with the, the blogger who comes in right. and they have a terrible experience, yeah. right? Because that person was having a bad day, right? you know? Uh, so I would look for those qualities okay. um, and create your own, um, metrics for success, right? Yeah. Everyone here is positive. And what does that mean? You know, don't just be blurry about these things. Yeah. We greet everyone with a smile. We say, thank you. Mm -hmm. We say, have a great day. Yeah. You know, we have to create this culture and create your culture. Yeah. Right. Versus give it nebulous, right. Uh, feeling words and not really give it an action plan. Yeah. Right. One thing in, uh, you know, minimum wage, keeps raising right mm -hmm. rising and uh you know staff or people are getting paid more and more each year and you know it's one of the main things that businesses and restaurant owners are so worried about today mm -hmm. you know i have a client who they pay their dishwashers 15 dollars an hour because two doors up at wendy's that's they're getting paid 14.75 mm -hmm. an hour mm -hmm. 
So, um, I mean, you know, I've always kind of said, if I, if I go into, if I talk to a restaurant or where they keep saying, we just keep burning through people, keep burning through pe people. I've always liked what Gary Vaynerchuk has said, which is you can't, you're the owner. You can't expect somebody that you hire to a certain extent, no matter what you pay them to have the same passion and dedication you have. If you're a 10, the best person is really going to be like a nine. Mm -hmm. Um, and you shouldn't expect mm -hmm. them to be a 10 mm -hmm. or an 11. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so having said that, you know, if I talk to a restaurant where it's like they're just burning through people, one of the first things I say to them, assuming that I know some of the details about how they are and who they are, one of the first things I say to them is start paying people more, attract better talent by mm -hmm. offering mm -hmm. more money. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Like, mm -hmm. how do you feel? Do you think that's something that restaurants or businesses in general, but do you think that's something they should start doing automatically? I mean, yeah. Uh, Gary's advice is half there. Okay. Uh, he's correct yeah. in saying yeah. not everyone's going to have your passion and what have you. But what I work with uh, owners on and leaders on is that what we can do is increase effectiveness and productivity. Okay. We forget that. Yeah. And we think let's just throw money at it to address it. Right. But if I want to get some success with the staff, the team I have, mm -hmm. I'm going to help build their skills. Yeah. I, they may not be as passionate as I am about my, my own business, right. but I can help them develop the skills. So I'll give you the example. A skilled carpenter comes in right now mm -hmm. and I give them a box or them a box of tools, the wood and all the things that they need to make a birdhouse. And they come in and they put it together in an hour. Mm -hmm. Then I ask an inexperienced person to put together the same birdhouse and it takes them the long weekend. Yeah. What's the difference? Yeah. Skill, right? right? And their effectiveness to do it. Mm -hmm. So if we're working on effectiveness and productivity with all of our team, mm -hmm. including ourselves, we're going to recoup more capacity. Okay. We're not going to get more capacity. Yeah. Right. So if you have 10 people and ultimately you can't afford 10 people down the road, yeah. then your only choice is to help develop those 10 people mm -hmm. so that they're killing it. Yeah. Right. And so if they're all at 30% effectiveness and yeah. productivity, by gosh, you've got so much opportunity to grow. We'd never examine it from that lens. Right. And so yeah. I would say focus on competencies and skills of all your folks. Have the most qualified dishwasher working for you. Have yeah. the most qualified barista, yeah. front end person, all of it. Right. Yeah. You know, at 15 years old, I'm the top scanner for Wegmans. Right. I, I improved my skill, yeah. right? It wasn't an age thing. It wasn't my enthusiasm for scanning uh, groceries, right? Yeah. It was a skill. Yeah. And so I would look at it from the skill competency standpoint and okay. really work on that. Don't um, give up on folks. Help them develop their skills and be the best at what they're doing. Yeah. And that ultimately helps your bottom line. Yeah. Hmm. You know, I when I go to... Uh, I'm not going to say the name, but there's a few places downtown <laughs> that I frequent a lot. And when I see a new crew of people come in and it takes yeah. them longer to produce whatever it is, yeah. they're going through a learning process. But if it stayed that way long term, that business is going to lose money. Yeah, for sure. Right. And so how are we helping folks develop the skills to do what they're doing more effectively and productively? Yeah. You know, I'm, I kind of, uh, I like going in sometimes and not being noticed. Mm. That sounded really uh, arrogant. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. How can I say that better? Um, I like having a true experience. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I can't say, I can't think of a way to say this now. Yeah. It sounded like a yeah. tool. Um, there's sometimes I go into restaurants where they're on Instagram or the, their staff are, and they recognize me from the Instagram stories. Sure. They're like, oh, hey, you know, and they say something and, you know, they do a little bit better of a job than they typically would. And there's other times where, like, you know, I walk in and they don't and, you know, mm -hmm. you kind of get the, a true, more true experience. Mm -hmm. um, today, it just made such a difference. Today, I went to a place and there is uh, the barista, you know, who I've seen a hundred times, um, who's always been kind of indifferent never really friendly. Like mm -hmm. there's like a few different baristas. There's one who, when I walk in, they're like, Hey, how's it going? Mm -hmm. You know, what do you want? And you know, I'll mm -hmm. go sit down and they'll bring me my coffee and it's great. Mm -hmm. This one who I've seen there a hundred times is just kind of 
eh, whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, today uh, she was there, and there was another barista there who was taking my order and actually making my drink. And I ordered it, and as the newer one went to go make the drink, the girl who has always been indifferent, never said anything, walked over to her and said, hey, you need to make sure that looks really good because he's probably going to take a picture of it and put it on Instagram. You know, so it was just kind of that one mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. she wasn't this, mm-hmm. didn't morph mm-hmm. into this, hey, mm-hmm. how's it going? You know, That's right. over the yes. top. Yes. But she showed an effort, mm-hmm. and, you know. Yeah. You just made my point in right. regards to introversion, extroversion. Okay. The extrovert, yes, it's hard to miss us. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But the introvert can also do engagement. Yes. And that was an active engagement. Yeah. Right. You felt a certain way about it. You're Mm -hmm. like, that's really cool. Yeah. That's neat that that happened. But this person is not effervescent and jumping off the walls. Yeah. Um, it can be done no matter what style yeah. that you have, right? And so engagement is so important because you feel connected and threaded. Right. The human condition. Yeah. We want to be validated, yeah. right? And so if you're the cool dude who's you know, <laughs> uh, running this organization right. and folks see you, yeah, you're like, oh, that's yeah. awesome, right. right? They're paying attention to what I'm doing too. Yeah. And it's not so much of who you are. So to help you out, you weren't a tool. Right. Uh, <laughs> it's just about, it's the validation of, yeah, I'm the person that, that does this. Yeah. And you're participating by right. making the coffee or, and, and, and uh, having me uh, make this exchange, yeah. you know? And so that's really neat, yeah. you know? And I, I've seen examples in that particular exchange that have headed south. Yeah. You know, and I have to stop myself because of the, who I am. Right. I can't <laughs> do on the spot coaching. Yeah. <laughs> I just have to sort of settle and just walk away, yeah. do the best I can. But I had an example where a new barista was being trained mm-hmm. and I had ordered my um, item and the person um, was talking about another person barista that works at another location Mm. to this new barista saying this person does it wrong and they make it with um, uh, espresso and not coffee and it's wrong and I said you know oh you know happy adventures I love it that way (laughs) and the barista looks at me deadpan and just says it's wrong And I'm like, oh, no, like, what's happening? This is happening to me? Oh, no. And I'm like, no, we're having fun. Like, that's like, even if you make it the right way, like, I'm still going to drink it and I'm going to have a good time. I was more disappointed that she was talking about the other person Mm. versus the the thing. And so then I doubled down on it. I'm like, well, you know, happy accidents. And she tripled down on it. And she looked at me again and she's like, no, it's incorrect. So, but like, so if... You don't have conversations about yeah. successful engagement strategies right. for your customers, your clients, or how you want your culture to be. Those moments will happen, yeah. right? But a lot, of, a lot of us, because we're specialists and good at what we do, we forget that our business has to run a certain way, yeah. right? And so it doesn't matter what we do. How do we treat people, yeah. right? How do we negotiate and have fun 